for coming, everyone. My name is William Morgan. I'm one of the creators of Linkerd. Uh, mostly today, uh, these days, I just make commits to the README file and not to any of the code. Uh, this is the very first ever Linkerd meetup, so I have a set of instructions for what we're going to do. We've never actually had an official Linkerd meetup, but we've gone to a lot of um, Linkerd uh, talks at other meetups, uh, and we have so we have two speakers today. Um, I'm going to do a very brief intro, then I'm going to turn it over to um, Siggy, who is a software engineer at Buoyant. He's going to give a talk about Thanos and Kubernetes and Linkerd. Uh, then we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll turn it over to Jay Evans, uh, an infrastructure engineer at Strava, who will be talking about how Strava has been using Linkerd, um, one of our earliest Linkerd adopters. And favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I thought since this was the very, very first time that we're doing this, I would give a uh, brief introduction to Linkerd. Hopefully, this will be very boring for you because you already know what Linkerd is. Um, but in case you didn't, it's a service mesh. It's an open source project, and it's part of the CNCF, the Cloud Native, Native Computing Foundation. It was, I think, maybe the fifth project that was accepted way back in 2017. Uh, it's been in production uh, at least two years, um, at companies around the world, lots of Slack channel members, so uh, that's kind of where most of the community congregates in slack.linkerd.io, so if you're playing around with it, feel free to hop in there and uh, say hi. Um, lots of GitHub stars, Docker Hub pulls, contributors, um, lots of production traffic, and uh, a great community of people like you. And so when we talk about like why you want to use Linkerd, uh, it comes down to kind of three uh, pillars. There's there's one around um, visibility or observability. Um, there's one around reliability and there's one around security. And what Linkerd does, which uh, makes it interesting, is it provides all those features at the platform layer rather than at the application layer. And so that means for folks who are on the SRE side of the house or who are on the platform owner side of the house, you get all this functionality without having to talk to developers or without having to interact with developer teams or without having to get a lot of work onto their roadmaps. And that's really a lot of the value is providing uh, kind of a consistent layer of these things at the platform layer. Um, of course, it's, not, it's never a complete story, so you still need application monitoring and you still need instrumentation in the app itself but Linkerd can give you top-line service metrics, right? And you still need uh, reliability semantics built into the application code itself, but Linkerd can do a bunch for you at the platform layer. And you still need security, of course, it you know, uh, has to come in layers, so there's a lot of stuff that has to be done at every layer of the stack to have security, but Linkerd can do a bunch at the platform layer. Um, and I've got some fancy screenshots here. We'll see more of those in, in real life um, in, in some of the demos. Uh, Brief history lesson, so Linkerd was the very first service mesh project, and we, you know, way back in 2016, we're out there trying to convince people that service mesh was a term that was like a real word, and people didn't really want to hear that. Um, joined the CNCF in 2017. Um, in September of last year, so that's uh, about six months ago, we launched Linkerd 2.0, and right now there's two parallel branches of development. So there's the 1.x stuff, um, which is uh, built on what we call the Twitter stack, because a lot of the early Linkerd folks came from Twitter, so that's uh, Netty and Finagle and Scala and the JVM. Very, very production tested, supports a whole bunch of environments. Um, and then there's also the 2.x branch, uh, which is built on Go and Rust, no JVM whatsoever. Right now is primarily focused on Kubernetes, but there's a long roadmap of, of stuff about that uh, uh, ahead of us. Um, so uh, both of those are maintained in parallel and both have the same value props, right? same uh, observability and security and reliability, um, but the implementation details are, are quite different. So far, so good? Did anyone, did anyone come here not expecting this to be the linker to be made up? <laughs> you can raise your hand. No, okay, good. Um, okay, so um, you know a bunch of the questions that we get recently is around uh, um, are around Linkerd 2.x. Uh, I actually wrote a um, article just last week for InfoQ. It hasn't been published yet. Around a lot of these design goals, um, a lot of what we learned with Linkerd one um, was turned into uh, kind of product features and design philosophy for for Linkerd two. Um, so the goals uh, for for <laughs> well, the goals for one X were primarily 
here's a whole bunch of awesome functionality. Let's expose it to you so that you can use it without having to become a Scala programmer. That was like the original goal. Uh, for 2.x, we were a little more um, uh, cautious and thoughtful about it. Uh, and there were uh, a couple of goals. One was we wanted it to just work. So if you have a functioning application and you install Linkerd, nothing should break. And that actually is quite difficult to do. Um, it should be really, really fast and really, really small. Um, and so we wrote things in Rust and, and, and Go. And then it should be understandable. And that was kind of the hardest uh, one to accomplish. So when you introduce the service mesh into production, it's always a thing to explain because it's new and it's scary. Um, and we want to give you as many as much diagnostics and as much understanding of what was happening under the hood. Um, so all sorts of cool stuff that uh, you'll learn about in, in some of the talks. So architecture diagram, I'm going to skip over that. Imagine lots of boxes talking together via <laughs> arrows. Um, there's a control plane, there's a data plane, there's lots of blog posts about this. Um, and we've, uh, uh, I've got like kind of a, a, a breakdown of the matrix um, between the features in 1.x and 2.x. For those of you who are sitting over here, you've set, sat in like the hardest place to see the screen, so congratulations. If you shift, if everyone shifts over by one seat, you'll actually see a lot more. But uh, this deck that I'm presenting right here is actually uh, available online, so if anyone wants to go to a meetup and talk about Linkerd or wants to talk about it in your company, um, send me a tweet or talk to someone on Slack, and I'll send you a link to this deck. This is the official public Linkerd meetup deck. Um, and it includes things about roadmap and like what's on the what's on the, the horizon for um, the 2.x branch, especially. This is a very final slide, and then I'm going to turn it over to the actual speakers. Um, but I just wanted to say, Linkerd is an open source project, and uh, a big part of that is our community. It's not possible without um, our very uh, friendly and enthusiastic community of adopters and users and developers um, and contributors. So please check out GitHub, uh, Linkerd. We've got a couple um, Google Summer of Code students who are like going crazy right now. We've got a lot of contributions from uh, from all, all over, and that makes us feel very happy because a big part of uh, an open source project, of course, is the community around it. And then lots of nice tweets. So if you like Linkerd, feel free to tweet about it. Maybe one day your tweet will be featured on the official Linkerd meetup deck. Okay, so that's really all I have. Thank you for sitting through that. Again, my name is William Morgan. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it over immediately 